All right, Middlebury's informational meeting will come to order. The legal voters of the town of Middlebury in the county of Addison, the state of Vermont are hereby warned and notified to vote by Australian ballot on articles one through five on Tuesday, March 1st, 2022 from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Recreation Center at 154 Creek Road in Middlebury as provided by, by the Middlebury Town Charter and by State Senate Bill 172 Act 77 signed into law by the governor on January 14, 2022, which due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic temporarily allows a municipality to apply the Australian ballot system to any or all of its town units. The legal voters of the town of Middlebury are further notified that the Middlebury Select Board will hold an informational meeting on articles one through five on Monday, February 28, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the large conference room of the Middlebury Town Offices at 77 Main Street in Middlebury and by Zoom video conferencing with details provided. As the warning states, this is an informational meeting only, so no action will be taken on any articles tonight. All motions, remarks, and questions should be directed to, to myself as moderator. I will do my best to recognize everyone in the order of hands raised, alternating between in-person and online participants. Here in the room, after I recognize you to speak, please stand up, come to the seat right in front of the camera, state your name for the record, and speak up so that we can hear you. Um, for online participants, please put up your Zoom hand and wait to be invited to speak. When queued, unmute your microphone and state your name for the record before speaking. Because this is a warm town meeting, consent must be given for several non-residents to present information and answer questions this evening. Her names are town on manager Kathleen Ramsey, director of public works and planning, Dan Warner, library director, Dana Hart, fire chief, David Shaw, uh, Kate Rothwell from, and from Middlebury EMS. If there's no objection to these folks participating, then we can begin. Hearing no objection, let me introduce you to your select board. I'm gonna move around, see if Al will follow me. Chair Brian Carpenter, Vice Chair Heather Seely, <laughs> Member Nick Arden, Dan Brown, Esther Williams, <laughs> on the other side of the room, <laughs> member uh, Lindsay Fuentes Boyd and Farhad Khan. Um, article one Shall the voters of the town of Middlebury vote to adopt the proposed budget for the fiscal year 2023? which is from July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023, in the amount of $11,927,483, with a portion thereof in the amount of $7,881,063 to be raised by taxes and $731,632 to be allocated from annual local option tax receipts in excess of debt and maintenance requirements of the Cross Street Bridge to offset spending for capital improvements. I'm going to be inviting Kathleen Ramsey to speak to the budget. Thank you, uh, Susan. I'm going to speak a little bit. Good evening, everyone, to get the owl over here. <laughs> um, thank you. I, and then I will uh, be sharing a screen for a, a brief budget presentation. Overshot the mark there. After careful and thorough deliberation, the select board adopted an FY23 
July 1st, 2022 through June 30, 2023, budget requiring for the first time in several years, a small increase in the estimated tax rate from 0.77969 to 0.8269, a 3% or 3.9% increase for consideration by the voters. You see here, we've been basically flat for several, for three fiscal years, dipping a little bit last year because the board decided to have raised the equal amount of taxes as the previous fiscal year due to the uncertainty uh, of the COVID pandemic. With the growth in the grant list that resulted in a slight decrease in the tax rate last year. The proposed budget reflects both inflationary pressures and the town's continued commitment to a robust capital improvement plan and an official and an efficient vehicle and equipment maintenance and replacement plan while preserving the current levels of town services. In developing the FY23 budget proposal, the board has sought to minimize the increase in the tax rate by drawing on surplus funds from previous years operations in an amount that it believes balancing the ongoing need for available reserve funds to meet future unanticipated events and, and against the likelihood of continued high levels of inflation. So you see that the uh, FY23 budget request is up $416,555, a 3.6% increase, while tax revenues are up $309,139, a 4.1% increase. Uh, that is due to um, several um, decreases in non-tax revenues. Here we have the breakdown of where your tax dollars are spent. Public works, 3.6 million. Uh, police department, 2.5 million. Fire, library, recreation, health and human services, administration and miscellaneous debt service and cross street bridge debt service. And finally insurance. It is important to note that if these numbers don't match the numbers in your town report as the bottom uh, line for each of these departments, because these numbers include the capital improvement amounts and also the benefits by department. So that's the full load for each of these departments. Revenue, you see the uh, overwhelming uh, majority of our revenue comes from property taxes. The board's decision to put just over $400,000 of previous year's surplus to minimize the reduction, minimize the increase in the tax rate. Charges for services and others, so that would be recreation programs, um, library programs, town clerk services, town and interfund town interfund and school transfers, which are uh, transfers from the school for tax property tax collection fees and from the water and sewer departments for general administrative expenses of the town. State and federal revenue, local option tax, which has been uh, robust through the pandemic. Um, and we're increasing it slightly this year from one Million dollars in previous fiscal years to one million fifty thousand dollars in the coming year. We recently received the last quarter of 2021 property uh, local option tax receipt report, and it was uh, the best quarter we've ever had in that best fourth quarter we've had in the last uh, 12 years. So we're well on track to exceed that uh, $1,050,000 uh, projection for next year. 
finally gives the payments from the college. <clears throat> what the, just a quick look at what is driving our, the increase in the budget, wage increase, $163,523, employment benefits, $54,000, Capital improvements, $122,366. Equipment fund replacement, $69,052. Equipment fund maintenance, $9,325. So those total expense drivers are $418,000, um, $418,262. That's not to be confused with the budget increase, but just to show you that these these drivers are primarily um, making that increase along with other items. Capital improvement expenses, uh, public works is up $131,000, $131,000 and and other items have decreased with libraries in the fire department staying about the same. Here's a breakdown of where our capital improvement funds go. 83% goes to public works, 1% to the police department, 5% to the fire department, and 5% to the recreation department, 3% to libraries, and 3% to general government and new initiatives. Here are some highlights of our capital improvements plan for this summer. We have a major water improvement project on Washington Street and Court Square, continuing uh, the board's work from previous years. The reconstruction of Colonial Drive, highway, water, sewer, stormwater utilities uh, being upgraded there. Colonial Drive, for those who are not familiar with that road, it's off Washington Street uh, in back of near the co-op yeah, fire insurance. Katie Road recycling and paving, Lino Lane, Kings Grove Road recycling and paving, and North Branch Road paving. Completion of the Route 116 water main in conjunction with the Vermont Agency of Transportation's culvert replacement, replacement near Down Pond, um, pending the Agency of Transportation schedule. Halliday Road pump station improvements, sidewalk replacement along Washington Street and Seminary Street extension. Planning for a new sidewalk from the rail platform to downtown. And then what we've all been waiting for is parks and recreation capital improvements, <clears throat> which will include reconstruction of the outdoor basketball and pickleball courts at Rec Park, as well as at the addition of one pickleball court for a total of three. Reconstruction of the softball fields at Rec Park and universal signage at various parks. Resealing the seams on the Memorial Sports Center roof, adding engineered wood fiber for the playground at Merrill Curtis Park, and parking at Jack Brown Park to address issues raised by residents in East Middlebury. Planning for numerous pool upgrades, including new bleachers, lane lines, a winter cover, a water slide and exterior doors. Also numerous upgrades to the teen center, siding, windows, doors, and additional insulation to the attic. <clears throat> so part of your warning includes the amount of the local option tax, uh, which was uh, instituted to pay the debt service on the cross street bridge fund. So I always like to review with you what the debt is, the total debt on the cross street bridge fund for this fiscal year, this coming fiscal year, 
is $918,368. Received a gift from the college for $600,000 of that. So that leaves the town of Little Mary to come up with $318,368. Taking the anticipated $1,050,000 Subtracting the 318,368, we have local option tax, the net local option tax available for the use on cap for capital improvements is $731,632 as requested in your draft. And then I just wanted to share with you this uh, chart which uh, shows us that since FY 2002 to the current uh, coming fiscal year, FY 23, we've increased capital improvement spending from $283,532 to $1,516,585. Thanks to a steadfast dedication by the board and support from the voters to invest in capital improvements. As we discussed at several previous town meetings, the board has continuing the trend of fully funding all equipment fund purchases. Um, and those numbers are included in the FY23 budget. We have the placement of two police cruisers and for the Par Department of Public Works, one dump truck plow replacing a 2010 dump truck plow and a loader mower replacing a 2006 piece of equipment. We also like to feature uh, the several agencies that have requested increased funding. Uh, Agewell, Open Door Clinic, and the Red Cross of Vermont. Agewell. Agewell's mission is to provide the support and guidance that inspires our community to embrace aging with confidence. Agewell has experienced a very high increase in the need for services during the pandemic. In 2020, the agency served 347 Middlebury residents. And in 2021, that number rose to 380. They have requested, and it is included in the budget, a $1,000 increase in funding from 3,000 to 4,000. The agency's first increase since 2013. The Open Door Clinic. The Open Door Clinic provides free health care for the uninsured and underinsured residents of the area. The clinic is seeing more patients and seeing more complex cases and has worked to reach out to and serve migrant workers and other underserved members of the community. The Open Door Clinic served 148 Middlebury residents in 2021, up from 90 served in 2020. The Open Door Clinic has requested a $2,500 increase in funding from 3000 to $5,500, the agency's first requested increase since 2016. The American Red Cross deploys staff and volunteers all over the country to support mass care efforts in the wake of large scale national disasters such as hurricanes and wildfires. Locally, the most common disaster responses are for home fires. The Red Cross also facilitates the collection and distribution of blood for local hospitals and first aid and CPR trainings to the community. They have requested a $1,000 increase in funding from $2,000 to $3,000. The agency was previously funded at the $3,000 level in FY21 and mistakenly submitted a $2,000 request for funding in 2022. So I'll stop the share there and invite any questions uh, people may have on the budget. Are there any questions from anyone in the room? Anyone have their hand up in the Zoom? I'm not seeing anyone in the Zoom. Uh, 
have a question, now is your chance. Moment. Oh, Kathleen, I'm sorry to interrupt. Does that say attendees 50? 52. Oh, 52. Yeah. Hi, Adam. Uh, hello. Uh, the budget there was that there was a uh, oops, we get a feedback. Um, you you were kind of in and out. So. You're breaking up a little bit, Adam. Okay, so there was a note of a sidewalk from the new rail platform. Is that uh, an extension of existing sidewalks along a route, current route, or a uh, new route for a sidewalk? It would be a new route. Uh, along Seymour or uh, through Maple Street area? We are currently looking at alternatives for the siding of the sidewalk. Thank Either. you. Are there any other questions? Somebody on the chat. I'm going to check the chat. Who is this? Oh, I, I think that. <clears throat> oh, you can't see the whole page. Uh, sorry, Linda. Um, and uh, I have Linda, an inquiry, who is this? And I, I Linda, did you want to um, ask your question so that we can answer it for you? Raise your hand. Hi, um, I didn't have a question. I couldn't see like all of the uh, graphs and things, you know, like the dates were cut off and stuff. And I thought maybe somebody could have fixed that. Um, but I do have a question. And that is, is um, last year, Maple Street was mostly repaved. And then there was the construction on the rail platform. Um, and there's still a the good S turn there that's quite chopped up. Is that going to get addressed? I'll, uh, we can ask Dan Werner, Director of Public Works Operation, if I can find him in the crowd here. Dan? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, I'll have to take a look at it. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, but. Um, We'll go by and take a look to see if it's anything that remaining from the from the Maple Street project. So Uh, no more questions. We can move on to. Oh, there's a question. Uh, not related to wait, the wait, budget. can you come up to the not Which... related to the budget, just a point. Okay, can you uh, state your name for the yeah, record? Please. My name is Joan Stevens. I just wanted to make a correction in your introduction to of Esther Thomas. I think you misspoke. Oh, did her I say name. Williams? I'm sorry. Yeah, now I'm, my brain just popped okay, in. Okay, that's all I want. Sorry, to Esther. I introduced Esther as Esther Williams. It's Esther Thomas. My apologies. It's names are important. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> really nervous. <laughs> I was going to have to take the long walk back over here. Um, so if there's no more questions, we'll move on to Article 2. Shall the voters of the town of Middlebury vote to collect taxes on real property for fiscal year 
2022-2023 in three equal installments due in the treasurer's office on the 15th day of August 2022, on the 15th day of November 2022, and the 15th day of March 2023. Kathleen, any comments? I think it's just if there's any questions from the audience at this point. Anyone in the room? Anyone on Zoom have a question for parceling out three payments? I don't see anything. All right, we're going to move on to Article 3. Shall the town of Middlebury vote to exempt the real property of the Middlebury Regional Emergency and Medical Services um, Incorporated from taxation for a period of five years commencing April 1st, 2022? Are there any questions? Is, is anyone here in the room ready to speak on this? Kate Rockwell is uh, in the audience. I'm just going to look okay, for find you, Kate, on Zoom. You're with us. Hi, Kate. You can unmute and Good evening. Hello. Hi, you're here actually. Dave Fuller is with me as well, just finishing up his shift. Okay, are you are you both right there? We are. Oh, hello. <laughs> and I'll share the, the slides that you gave. Hold on. Go ahead, Kate. Just make that a little bit smaller. There we go. Go ahead, Kate. Yeah, so just to keep things short, um, historically, the uh, townspeople have voted to exempt us um, as allowed um, under the article, um, and we just um, appreciate the community for their continued support of our mission. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, Are there any questions for regional EMS at this time? So, sure. Zoom hand up. Seeing anybody, Kate? So, if you wanted to say anything else, or uh, David wanted to say anything, you're welcome. I, I think we're all set. Thank you very much. Just okay, wishing everybody you. continued health and safety throughout this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kate. Article four, shall the town appropriate $750 to Addison Allies Network Incorporated so that it can continue its work to assist migrant farm workers and immigrants living and working in the county in accordance with 24 VSA 2691. Would you like to come up to the front? State your name again for the yep. record, please. Same name. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Joe Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'd like to speak in support of the $750 funding request made by Addison Allies Network. And I just wanted to give a brief overview of the agency. Addison Allies Network is a nonprofit and primarily a, a volunteer organization with a part time executive director. AAN was founded to assist migrant workers who live in Addison County. It is estimated that there are between 350 and 650 migrant farm workers in the county. The exact number is not known. AAN has received support from many local organizations, including St. Mary's Catholic Church, Middlebury Congregational Church, Champlain Valley Unitarian Universalist Church, Lincoln United Church, Meet Repeats United Way, Vermont Community Foundation, American Flatbread, Revolutionary Cross, Hope, Ben and Jerry's, Co-op Insurance, Middlebury College, and many other groups and many other individuals. Our volunteer activities include teaching English on the farms, 
providing rides to medical and dental appointments, assisting workers to get driver privilege cards, providing information to workers to assist them with income taxes and car buying, and ensuring legal issues such as workers' comp. We've also helped workers to get things they needed like household items and other clothes. Assist, we also assisted in organizing the Mexican consulate visit each year, once a year in conjunction with the Champlain UU Church. In the past year, we've sponsored and helped organize two very successful Viva La Sabor events, fiestas, helping to support eight women and their families and bringing genuine Mexican food to Addison County residents. We've also formed a board of primarily Mexican workers to teach and enable them to govern themselves and to strengthen the community. And we've supported migrant workers in, in accessing the funds that were awarded by the government relief fund offered by the state of Vermont, which amounted to tens of thousands of dollars. Farm workers in Addison County in many places live in group households on farms and generally the housing is substandard. Mm -hmm. Essentials like beds, refrigerators, and other household furnishings are scarce and often not sufficient for the numbers of people living in the household. Houses generally are uninsulated and hard to heat in the winter and to cool in the summer. When Edison Ally volunteer teachers went to the farms, they began to bring things to homes to make the farms, the homes, excuse me, more livable and functional. AAN has expanded this action we call it asset redistribution. <laughs> and this is a main program area. We seek out free items, but we sometimes have to pay for them to pick up and also for pickup and delivery. Funding would help support the cost of purchase and delivery of necessary items. Migrant farm, farm workers are essential workers in our community. Their labor produces our food. They support local businesses by purchasing essential items and patronizing local businesses. We ask the Middlebury voters cast their votes in favor of our request of $750 to support this program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions about Article 4? In a few minutes, I'm all set. Thank you. Um, in a few minutes, I'll be inviting candidates for office to say a few words if they wish. But first, I'd like to invite Brian Carpenter up to say a few words of appreciation for outgoing select board member Nick Arden. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, first, I want to thank the town of Middlebury for all the support that uh, you give us on a on a routine basis. And I apologize for us not being able to have a town meeting. Uh, it was an option. We considered it. It just doesn't work given the criticality of being able to provide the, the services and to be effective in our infrastructure projects. We need a budget approved. And given that that is the main purpose of our town meeting, um, we needed to, to keep on our schedule. And so for those of you who are tuning in tonight, uh, it's not the same experience. And certainly we are disappointed by it, but it's important um, that it be on a timely basis. <clears throat> Secondly, for those of you who haven't gotten it, uh, I want to point out that this year's, this year's uh, annual report uh, and it's available online as well, I believe. Uh, it was dedicated to uh, Chief Hanley, and Chief Hanley has served our community incredibly well and uh, was recognized as the Emergency Management Director of the Year. That is not why we selected him. We selected him because of the work he's done for our town. And uh, Chief, uh, we really do appreciate it and uh, glad we were able to recognize you. Um, I'd like to recognize all my other uh, board members. Uh, it, it's uh, a, a lot of, of hours and uh, on a routine basis we're meeting and I know it seems like it's a glorious job 
but uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're probably more like uh, linemen than we are quarterbacks. Um, with that, I'd like to invite up uh, Nick Artem uh, so that uh, I can recognize a long-term member of our board. Uh, Nick has been on the board for 12 years. Nick is a uh, engineer uh, by trade, a family man, longtime community member, and uh, always willing to serve on additional committees. He's been a part of the select board during a, a, really the lion's share of all of the work that we've done in upgrading community facilities and a lot of the, the community infrastructure. Nick has given uh, endless hours willingly to support the community and uh, is now uh, decided that, that uh, he's got an opportunity he can't pass up, which takes him out of the community uh, during the spring and fall and makes it difficult for him to, to continue to serve uh, effectively as a board member. So he's stepping down from the board, but we are already putting him on committees. So uh, <laughs> you, you won't get away that easy. But uh, with that, one of the things that Nick was passionate about is as an engineer, the infrastructure. And so uh, he was he was key in building the new town facilities, uh, the, or the new town uh, offices facilities, the, uh, the rec building, and then most recently our bridge and rail project. And he did, uh, I think almost a daily inspection of the works. So we had more than one inspector on the job and uh, we certainly appreciate that. And in commemoration of all of his work on that project, we have, a little, <laughs> we have uh, an official Middlebury Bridge and Rail uh, hard hat from, uh, with, from DA Collins Company, who uh, he was not employed with, but he was overseeing their work. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Bridge and Rail Project. I don't know if I'm going to give this this bit name. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge and Rail Project uh, sweatshirt. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> thank it's been a, a wonderful 12 years. And again, just brief, I want to thank the 18 board members I've served with, including three excellent chairs. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I've learned a lot from all of them. Fantastic town administration and town employees. We, the town employees just do an amazing job every every day. Uh, services that don't get noticed. The, the clean water is taking care of wastewater. It's plowing the streets. It's you know running the library. Right? And it's, it's just been an outstanding to be a part of such a wonderful group of people. I, I can't thank them enough for the, the wonderful job they've done. Uh, there's a lot of great things coming, and uh, and I and also I appreciate all the town people. Have, especially those who have come up to me through the years to express their opinion. And when I first came on the board, Dean George was was the one who actually brought me into the board when it was a vacancy. And he was the vice chair at the time, uh, when he became the chair. And he said, always remember there's multiple sides to the story. Don't just listen and get locked in by what one group says. You've got to understand the multiple sides. With that, you ultimately end up with the best answer. So I appreciate all of those who came forward with varying opinions because you're always heard and we all hear you. That makes a better community. So thanks for everything. And what committees am I on? <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know. We'll yeah. let you know. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much. It's been an honor, Nick. Thank you. Yeah. We're all good friends. Thank you. So I, we need to uh, have a little you know, fundraising with that uh, <laughs> sweatshirt design there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. That's that's great. Great. I'm going to guard this one going yeah. door because yeah, it's like you disappear. Be careful. <laughs> might not make it good you <laughs> home. So, uh, I have one more thing, and that's a, a ask for the town is that you do support our budget. 
Uh, we've thought through the budget uh, very carefully. Uh, if you don't understand something, feel free to ask Kathleen or any of the board uh, before you cast your ballot. Uh, our, our efforts in, in the community to, to continue to improve on those services that you're asking for um, cannot occur without you supporting this budget. And I will tell you that you're seeing a lot more done than what you're paying for in this budget through the hard work of our town staff. Our town staff has been going out for matching funds and grants and different, uh, uh, different funding for projects that we have not had to pay for within our community. And that's because of the excellent planning and preparedness and having the projects ready to go when funds are available and having some funds within our budget to do the town's match. So uh, we're working hard to provide you a really a beautiful town. Love this town. Uh, appreciate your support. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Let me be the first to welcome you to the other side of being the slide board, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> you seem like you've done well. So I I've, I've, I've been plugged into my committee. Yes, you have. <laughs> um, so I'd like to invite um, candidates that are running for office to come speak. Um, is there anyone in the room that would like to speak? Hold up. Don't forget to state your name for the record, please. I'm uh, James Malcolm. I'm running for the uh, school board, ACSD. Uh, I'm running for the third term. Uh, I've been on school board for a long time. Uh, I was on the school board for 15 years back in uh, the 80s and until 2000, during the time that we uh, redid the high school and built the middle school. Those were difficult times as these are right now. <clears throat> I uh, came back on the board uh, because I was interested in the concept of consolidation and what that could bring to the district. Uh, and I've seen it uh, come to fruition uh, that it has made a big difference in how we can budget and have flexibility in crossing. Obviously, there's contentious times relative to the idea of school closures. And I think at this point, there is sort of a referendum out there with uh, the competitors uh, competing against uh, two established board members. I'm running unopposed at this point, so I'm not in the same position. But uh, I do think that this is a time when the district has to make uh, some profound decisions about how we're going to run our schools. And uh, as someone mentioned, we have to listen to all sides. It is true, we have to listen to all sides. But we, at some point, have to be the person who makes a decision after we listen to all sides. And I would really hope that the uh, community, uh, both Middlebury, which is by far the largest community in our district, by a substantial amount, uh, comes out and registers the fact that it is important to have a unified district and that we need to be supportive of the decisions that the school board makes. We're all like a select board uh, community members. We, uh, of course, come from a greater number of towns, but we don't do this because it's uh, I, some way on to further uh, uh, office or something of that nature, it's because we really want to be involved with education and want to make it place and an important part. So I would hope people come out and vote. Uh, hearing the discussion at the select board, it is just the same as a school board. We have to battle lots of different issues and at times they're not easy, uh, but hopefully we all are in this together and we'll come out. Thank you. Thank you, Chip. Is there anyone else in the room that wishes to speak? Is there anyone on Zoom, Kathleen? Yes. Steve Forsett. Steve? Unmute, just state your name for the record, please. Uh, my name is Steve Orzek. Hey, Steve. Go ahead. OK. Um, <laughs> Hi, my name is Steve Orzek, and I'm speaking to you today to ask for your vote for ACSD School Board as one of the Middlebury representatives. I would ask you to consider casting your vote for my experience, knowledge, and passion for education. 
If elected, this will not be my first time on this board. I served on the first AACSD Unified Board until 2019. My previous service on the board included membership on the Finance Committee. In that capacity, I worked with both the business manager and superintendent Burroughs and enjoyed those interactions as well as feeling challenged by both the complexity and responsibility of that role. Since retirement, I have stepped into the middle school to use my experience in education to help alleviate the substitute teacher shortage. I believe this gives me a powerful perspective to bring to the board in the coming years. This hands-on recent contact with students and educators enhances my training and experience as a classroom teacher. And because of my recent service on the board, I have worked with many of the current board members and look forward to the opportunity to work with them again if elected. In my previous service, I found that I both enjoyed the work I did on the school board and felt that it was a good use of my knowledge in the education area. This knowledge is founded on both formal training as exhibited in my completion of a degree, a master's degree in curriculum and instruction from the University of Virginia and 20 years of contract teaching using and refining that knowledge in actual classroom settings. Recently, I have also gained a teacher's eye view of the COVID crisis and the extensive changes that have recently rippled throughout Middlebury Union Middle School, at, such as the International Baccalaureate, the movement of the sixth grade to the school, the restructuring of the team model, and the leadership changes recently experienced. I know what a teacher faces when walking into a school, as well as what a parent sees when their teacher comes to that school. During my own children's school years, I served various roles helping at both the school and within the classes themselves. I particularly enjoyed my time in my youngest son's first grade class, helping, playing with, organizing, and supervising those curious and exciting little balls of energy. Indeed, it has become clear to me over the years just how much I enjoy much of what is involved in K-12 education. From contract teaching at both the middle and high school levels, both in the United States and in Brazil, to leading Boy Scouts and volunteering at the primary level, I've truly discovered that I'm passionate about the education of children in this society. And so I have remained in close contact with the ACSD education community at a very grassroots level. Although I have retired from teaching, I would like to continue working in the education field, doing work at the board level. It is my hope that the voters of this district will see fit to return me to this position. In conclusion, I would ask you your vote in light of my experience, knowledge, and passion for education. Thank you for your time and the opportunity to speak in this forum. Thank you very much, Steve. Do we have anyone else? We do. Okay. Um, that's Amy. Go ahead, Amy, state your name for the record, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes, hi, uh, my name's Amy Bashan. Um, and um, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm running for a re-election for the Ripton seat on the ACSD board. I feel called to serve on behalf of all students in ACSD, and I'm driven by a commitment to address inequities across our district regarding who has access to educational opportunities and whose educational needs are being met. I bring passion, experience, leadership, integrity, and accountability to my role. I'm a mother of two Ripton Elementary School and Middlebury Union High School graduates, and I've lived in Ripton for 23 years. I served on the Ripton School Board and the AC Supervisory Union Board from 2008 to 13. In that time, I oversaw the study circle process that engaged hundreds of citizens from each of our towns in the discussions around whether or not we would consolidate and unify our supervisory union into a single district. I'm also the ACSD representative on the MCTV board. My academic credentials and the entire 35 plus years of my professional career have all been in education, pre-K-12 and higher ed. And I actually teach a project-based course, winter term course at Middlebury College called the Future of Vermont Public Schools. I ran for the Ripton seat three years ago, knowing that as a district, we were facing huge complex challenges. I wanted to engage in a problem solving process with integrity, transparency, and robust community engagement. For me, the board's primary responsibility is to plan for and manage our assets and resources that best meets the needs of all of our students, making certain that all students feel welcome supported and successful is a top priority. By several measures, our socioeconomically disadvantaged, 
special education, and students of color are not performing as well as their counterparts. While our educational resources and programming are unevenly distributed across the district. I feel morally obligated to act on that. At the same time, we faced, as everyone knows, reduced enrollment, increased fixed costs, and vastly increased student needs, even before COVID and certainly since COVID. The status quo is simply not sustainable and doing nothing is not an option. We face very challenging decisions regarding the future of our district, but it's essential that the board engage our educational community and help members understand the reasoning and the results we hope to achieve. If I'm reelected, I pledge to collaborate with all of our stakeholders in building our future, particularly in how we cultivate a deep sense of belonging in our, as we redefine what our educational community is, and in upholding the unique strengths of each of our member towns. Seven years ago, our towns unified into a single district so that we could address these challenges together. I remain committed to that work of collaborative problem solving. And I vow to work on behalf of all of our students and families across the district, especially our most vulnerable. And I would be honored to serve the remaining 16 months that Ripton is on the ACSD board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. Thanks. Let's see one more hand up. Go ahead, Steven, state your name for the record, please. Hi, this is Steve Gross. And can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, fine, thanks. This is Steve Gross. Since moving to Middlebury in 1987, the library has been an important part of our lives. I've contributed uh, already by uh, starting the Middlebury Community Classic Film Club. Over the last four years, we had 11 series of films and actually have shown 42 films for our community especially during COVID with uh, the canopy service. So now I'm running for a place on the library's board of trustees because I wanna give something more back to the library, moreover to our wonderful town that has given us so much over these years. I respectfully ask for your vote and I thank you for considering me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. One more here. Go ahead, Andy. Hey there. Go ahead. Hi, Hi. Uh, my name is Andy Hooper. I'm a candidate for the select board. Um, I'm glad to see Nick Artem recognized for his 12 years of service. I'm sure he'll continue to uh, help out the town select board in many ways after his uh, pseudo retirement. And um, as a two year member of the Ilsley Library Board, I'm very excited to see Steve Gross step up to join that board and I'm Think he'll be a great contributor and asset there. Uh, as I just mentioned, I've spent two years on the library board and the select board has appointed me to represent Middlebury on both the regional planning commission and the solid waste district and also on the communication union district or Maple Broadband, which is looking at how to build out a fiber network for all of Addison County. Uh, in a previous life before I moved to Middlebury from Montpelier eight, nine years ago. Uh, I served in Montpelier on the city council there for eight years and a number of committees there and big projects. Uh, I've got a large blended family in town, four kids between the ages of 13 and 20 who've gone through just about every school and preschool and activity available around here. Um, my wife is a professor at the college and is the reason that I moved here. And um, I've got some ideas, some of which I was able to implement in, in uh, Montpelier and some of which have percolated up over the intervening years about how to encourage housing development, um, how to more equitably fund some of the municipal services, and just some general ideas about good management that I'd like to try to implement here. I want to thank all the candidates for all of the offices for running such positive campaigns and just 
say how encouraging it is that there's so many people who are willing to step forward and put their energy into sustaining the vibrancy and community that's so great about this town. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Last here again. All right. I will entertain a motion to. Oh, wait, there's candidates here. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> I'm going to go with <clears throat> Esther Thomas first. So if you wanted to get up, the owl will be, will be right there for you at the podium, or if you start talking and give it a little bit, if the camera will swing around. I'm going to go with Esther first. You're welcome to come up. Well, good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. Hi, everyone who's here via Zoom. Thank you for being here. I am Esther Thomas, and I am running again to be on the select board, and it has been an honor. This past year has been a time of learning the ins and outs of Middlebury. I thought I knew before I ran. I had no idea. And now, going, I'm, I want to do this again. I thought about it. I thought about, okay, why? What's my why? Do I want to stay here really? And the answer is yes. I asked myself the question, does your presence make a difference being in this space? Are you able to contribute in a way that's meaningful? And I realize I can, and I do. And so I want to do it again. And I'm asking my Middlebury residents, Please vote for me tomorrow. I'll be there at the polls after I drop off my son at daycare. Um, <laughs> I'll be there. And I mean, we've done great work. I've seen the completion of amazing projects. And I've seen the work that we've done with Lisa Moore and uh, wait, Lisa Ryan and, and Tabitha <laughs> Moore. Um, and I want to continue that work. I love the work that the library is about to embark on. I'm so excited and ready to support that project. And of course, housing. I am a soon to be renter. Yay! <laughs> uh, not really, um, <laughs> as I have to look for a house soon. Um, but I want to bring that perspective as we make some hard decisions. So I'm excited. I'm ready. I want to be here. I hope you'll have me. So um, I'll see you at the polls tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Heather, you want to come up? Sure. Good evening, everyone. I'm Heather Seely. I'm finishing up my uh, second three-year term on the select board. I would appreciate your support and vote for uh, one more three-year term. Uh, <laughs> I am. Um, I would love for for somebody in the next three years to step up and show interest. I would be uh, particularly interested in mentoring uh, another uh, woman candidate to make sure we keep a good balance on the board. So if there is any interest out there in uh, and some mentoring, I would love to do that over the next three years and, and get somebody ready to, to step up. Um, I don't have a big fancy speech prepared. Uh, I just really would like your support for one more term. Uh, I think as everyone knows, I'm, I'm the most interested in infrastructure and continuing our work on our deferred infrastructure and um, our roads and sewer and water work. Um, and I hope to continue continue pushing that work along over the next three years. Um, I also uh, really want to make a special thank you to Nick for his time here. He and I often have uh, very different views on things, but it's made for some great conversation and really helped um, look at different sides, you know, forced me to look at different sides and, and have different opinions. And so I really want to recognize his 12 years of service and say thanks again um, to him. And also all my other board members here. It's great to serve with you all. 
Um, I appreciate the time we spend together and the conversations we have. So I hope we get to do it for three more years. Sure. Thanks. So we have one more hand up. Jamie, would you like to state your name for the record and speak? Yes, hi, yeah. can you hear me? I'm Jamie McCallum. Go ahead. Um, hi everyone, friends and neighbors. Thanks for this opportunity to speak with all of you um, and to the other candidates as well. I'm Jamie McCallum. I live in Weybridge. I have a son at the Weybridge School and I'm a volunteer firefighter on the Weybridge crew. I'm running for a seat on the ACSD school board. Um, I began my career as a teacher at San Quentin Prison a long time ago, where I taught history to incarcerated adults. I've taught throughout the CUNY public system in New York City. And finally, I ended up teaching sociology at Middlebury College for the last decade. I've spent the pandemic conducting public health research on COVID in public schools. And after all that um, experience, the experience of a community connected school, Waybridge Elementary, is what drove my interest in school board issues. So as you know, as a school board member, we represent the whole district, not just one town. And I'm running for a board seat because I believe we need a board that is more responsive and accountable to the communities it represents, no matter where those schools are located across the district. We need to make sure our priorities focus on the emotional and mental well-being of students, teachers, and families, especially as we recover from the pandemic. Kids and teachers are stressed to the breaking point and they need the stability of their schools to succeed. We also have serious budget issues and we of course, yes, must be fiscally responsible. Right now, however, the process to face those challenges has eroded some trust between the board and our towns and communities. And I would like to help rebuild it by bringing diverse community voices back into the conversation. So if elected, I hope to chart a course forward with deep deliberation with our neighbors far away to bring our community together, including with fellow board members. Um, I hear some feedback, but I was just one more thing. <laughs> so as an educator for these last almost two decades, I feel like I'm a seasoned advocate for students, teachers, and staff. I hope for the chance to join the board to expand this commitment. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jamie. Any other hands up? One more. Last call. Anybody else in the room? Okay, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Farhad. Is there a second? second. Thank you, Brian. It's not debatable. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Recording stopped.